shit. Character creation. Let's talk about it. talk about a little topic that a lot of people have a lot of problems with, and that is character creation for tabletop pen and paper RPGs. For a lot of people, this can be overwhelming because there are so many choices, or they don't know the world, or they don't want to build a character that's going to not fit in with the rest of what everybody else is building. <sighs> And it can be hard. But there's hope. And part of that stems from sitting down and taking a look at what the world is about. There are a lot of factors that can make character generation hard or easy. It really all depends. First you have to look at the background of the character, what the character specializations are, what the mechanical way the character will function is, and last but not least, what kind of equipment to give the character. Now, there are some people who want to build power fantasy characters. They want their character to be everything that they're not, and a lot of times they have these grand, overpowerful ideas. Stop. Not stop having a power fantasy, but think about the character, not necessarily what you feel you need to feel happy about yourself. I know. It's kind of crazy. We play characters to roleplay, to be outside of ourselves. And if you're just going for a dungeon crawl, hack and slash, mechanics only campaign, maybe that's what you need to build. But if you're in a more roleplay heavy uh, campaign, maybe the character you should play is a little more support, is a little more nuanced. Maybe you have a lot of non-combat abilities. Not that 5th edition has much of that, because they've chopped away most of that stuff. Out the window. <coughs> so, when we're making a character, What's the first thing we've got to look at? Well, that's easy. It's the system. Fifth edition, you might want to lean more into the various combat abilities or lean heavily into your class. Taking your class is the idea for what your character is and what they're about. Maybe you want to build something zany, like... Uh, I don't know, a halfling barbarian. Or maybe you want to build something memorable. Like a dragon born Borlock? No matter what you do, no matter what combination of class and race and even background, somebody's done it somewhere. Which means you also shouldn't be judging the character creation of your fellows. Somebody might have built something very similar to a character in a TV show or a book or a movie. And that person may not necessarily have seen said book, movie, video game, etc. 
Or maybe they want to pay homage. That's their choice. I'm using 5th edition as an example here for character creation because it's what's modern. It's what everybody's playing right now. But these little factors are the kinds of things you're going to look at for any role-playing game system for any campaign ever. Can't think of a Star Wars campaign? Or a modern campaign? Or a science fiction campaign? Well, once you start introducing technology, it becomes a little easier because you start thinking in terms of Modernia, the modern day. And suddenly, you're not quite as limited, are you? And hell, a lot of the same things apply to building a character in a medieval setting. You can give somebody a tragic backstory, but you don't have to. There are probably plenty of people who live interesting and noteworthy lives that don't have some sort of tragic backstory or epic beginning. I mean, shit, it's not hard. We tend to look at things in the gaming community from the lens of what has to be epic. And sometimes the mundane can be quite just as much interesting, in my opinion, at least. It can be quite enjoyable. What happens when a member of a small town city guard just decides to leave on an adventure? Too many of the people that he's known have moved away or gone off. So he went to seek his fortunes. What happens when the town pickpocket just feels there's nothing left to be gained where they're at. I like to put myself in the position of the character. And maybe even translate my own life to a degree into what I'm creating. What parallels can I draw of circumstances in my life that have led me to think the way I do? that could have led somebody in that world to think in a very similar vein. I'm not playing myself, but for some people, especially people who are new to role-playing, and as a kid I did this a lot, what is the thought process behind all of these things? And it's not easy to figure out. Now, this is just to get you thinking, okay? You can build anything you want. Um, let's see. Uh, let's 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 come up with a character concept for Star Wars. Uh, galaxy far, far away. Interesting race. Um, Aqualish. Well, does he need to be a Jedi? No, no, no. That's, that's, that's what everybody does. And maybe he could be Force-sensitive, but again, that's just a part. And it shouldn't be the whole of what the character is. It's like a magic-using character shouldn't always, always be about magic. So what else can we... Well, truckers are a thing. Who moves the goods from one planet to another? And right there, when we start to think in those contextual lines, we can start to see characters forming. We're looking at the world in a way in which is lived in. 
we're building a character that we can understand, that we can sympathize with, that fits within the world. Um, I spent a lot of years as a security guard. So, guarding things makes sense to me. Maybe my character was was a town guard. It's different from the job I performed, but not so dissimilar that I can't understand it. Now, I've been playing role-playing games most of my life. Most of it. Far back as I can genuinely remember. I've played a lot of systems, and I've built a lot of characters. And once you get comfortable with the idea of building a character and playing a character, especially when you're role-playing as that character, you get more comfortable with going further and further outside of what you know. Further and further outside of what you're comfortable with. Maybe the next character I play will be... I don't know. A lesbian tentacle monster from another planet. I don't know. But you get the idea. You start to be able to go far outside of what you think. You're able to see role-playing games and contextualize the world. And that is something that I think is important because a world needs nuance and context. There are a lot of settings, many of which arguably don't have a lot of context. In them. Or when we look at novels, set in these worlds, or we look at role-playing games set in these worlds, we're given context from the angle of character creation. Or we're seeing the epic heroes that these novels are written about and thinking, well, my character has to be just as epic. What if he's just a guy? Building a low-level character, getting started in this hobby, is not as easy as it sounds, and a lot of us who have been playing for a very long time can't remember that it's not easy. And a lot of people just getting started, they hear these epic tales of epic characters in epic situations, and they look at their level one character thinking, well, I'm not epic. I made this huge epic backstory. It's, it's like a hundred pages long and nobody will read it. You're building a level one character. This is a person just getting started. A person just heading out the door. Remember, one of my favorite examples of character building is Frodo Baggins. Frodo is not what you'd call an epic level character. Not in the beginning. He's a guy. Just some farmer. Some kid from a small town. But he comes across the ring and away he goes. Every step of the way he's relying on other people. Even as he becomes more and more epic, he's still just a guy. And that contrasts starkly with characters like Drist Duerden. Drist starts off kind of epic. He's one of the fastest, most brilliant swordsmen. Um... He ends up with a horde of magical items and a group of friends going on crazy world-affecting journeys and adventures. But that's not 
typically D&D. Drist Urden is way higher than even your standard 20th level D&D character, especially for 5th edition. You're not going to be the end-all beat-all, and most campaigns start at level 1. Most. Not all. Not all. But most start at level 1. And that means... Tone it back. How much backstory do you need? I can make a playable, interesting character with three paragraphs of backstory. When I have a story-driven campaign and everything is based on where I'm moving forward, as a DM, the most I think I've ever asked for from a group of players for a backstory was a page. One page. To get an idea of who that character is, where they're from, and what they're about. And I, I feel that maybe addressing these things about character creation will help people build better characters. Will help people become better players. Not that you're not a good player already. You want to play. That, in and of itself, is a step in the right direction. This is a fun hobby. It's an amazing hobby. And if you're watching this video, trying to get a grasp of what to do for RPGs, go play. That's the best I can tell you. I mean, I could sit here and rattle off every detail of character creation for every single role-playing game system and setting and book and everything, but that's not going to help you. Build a character that fits in the world, that lives in the world. Sometimes that may mean reading the book and not the novel it's based on, not seeing the TV show. Sit down with the role-playing guy and read the book. What do these abilities do? What do rangers do? What are this race like? What's their society like? How does that translate into what you thought of for a character? It might surprise you that while you're flipping through, reading all this stuff, even if it doesn't sound interesting, read it. It might give you an idea for something else. It might give you an idea of how the world works. Or ask the DM what their world is like. Now some of you are probably thinking, Chance, Chance, you're, you're not giving easy answers. You're asking us to think. Yes. Asking you to think. To take your time. To not get hyped out with the first anime or video game character that comes to mind for that setting and trying to hammer that square peg into a round hole. Square pig round hole doesn't work. You can make an homage. I like, um, who's a character I like from something? Fuck. Uh, Goku. I love Goku as a character, um, and I like early Dragon Ball Goku, but you can't build Goku in D&D. &D. Square, square pig, round hole. 
but how can I make an homage? How can I make something that represents how I feel about that character and his journey and kind of carry that over in my own simple way? Well, Goku, at the heart of it, is a martial artist who values his friends and wants to get stronger. That's, that's all he really wants is to get stronger and fight strong opponents. Okay, there's a character motivation. That works in the system of D&D. Well, he fights with his fists. Maybe I build a monk. But you, you always hear about these people who want homebrew and special stuff and Usually, they're new players, and they get a bad rap, mostly because they try to jam their fandoms into everything. Maybe you like something, maybe you want to pay homage to it, but you're not that character. You're never going to be that character. First of all, chances are pretty good that the setting that you're going to find a game for is not that world. And if it is that world, that character probably already exists in that world, and you're not them. So it's not easy. It's not easy. I, I know you're probably a dog with your bone. But that's the essence of making a character. Is to sit down and build something engaging to the world. Alright. So... Hopefully, what I've had to say today will have had an impact on the way you think and help you maybe get over some of the hurdles of character creation. These are topics that can be hard for anybody. Anyways, like always, thank you for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, and share with anybody who's interested. Maybe hit that little bell icon down below. And remember to keep adventuring.